So welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and we are at the headwaters of the Mississippi at Itasca State Park in Minnesota. Come along for the ride. This may look like the creek out behind your house, but this, folks, is the mighty Mississippi River. The waters of Lake Itasca in northwestern Minnesota spill through the outlet and form a tiny stream that forms our nation's most important river and travels for more than 2,500 miles to the Gulf of Mexico. The Mississippi's watershed drains all or parts of 32 U.S. states and two Canadian provinces between the Rockies and the Appalachians and is one of the most important routes for transporting goods to and from the American heartland. That's all hard to believe here in Minnesota's Itasca State Park where you can walk on stepping stones or wade across the Mississippi in three or four seconds. We expected there to be a few people here, but we weren't prepared for this crowd of people wanting to see the source of the Mississippi River for themselves. A half million people visit Itasca State Park annually. Itasca State Park is massive, encompassing more than 32,000 acres of woodlands and 157 lakes north of Park Rapids, Minnesota. Established in 1891 to preserve the old growth red pine forests surrounding Itasca Lake from logging, it was Minnesota's first state park and only the second in the nation. This site consists of 10 burial mounds dating back approximately 800 years along the northeastern shore of Lake Itasca. Douglas Lodge, built in 1905, is the oldest surviving building in the park, constructed using peeled logs harvested from the surrounding forests. There are two campgrounds in Itasca State Park, including the Bear Paw Campground along Lake Itasca's eastern shore that we're driving through here. Both campgrounds include RV sites with electrical hookups. We had hoped to stay here, but with the park's popularity, we couldn't find a vacancy for our necessary dates. So that's how we ended up here at Country Campground in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, about an hour's drive away from the headwaters of the Mississippi. The owners here have been fantastic to work with and the grounds are meticulously maintained. Our generous, Pull through full hookup site costs $38 per night.
They call Minnesota the land of a thousand lakes. This is known as knob and kettle country. The knobs are mounds of debris deposited directly by the ice near the edge of glaciers that retreated 10,000 years ago, while the kettles are depressions, usually filled with water, formed by dormant ice masses buried or partially buried under glacial debris that later melted. The glacial moraine here covers the landscape to a depth of around 680 feet. The year-round population of Detroit Lakes is around 8,500 people, but it swells to more than 13,000 during the summer months, according to some estimates. It's located 45 miles east of Fargo, North Dakota, and around 200 miles northwest of the Minneapolis-St. Paul metropolitan region. The city grew quickly after its founding in the 1870s, thanks to the construction of the Northern Pacific Railroad. These days, tourism is the region's primary industry. A mile-long city beach on Detroit Lake lines West Lake Drive, also home to several bars and restaurants that capitalize on their lakeside location. There's always something compelling that draws us to man's creations that have fallen into disuse and disrepair. Whether it's the ghost towns of the Wild West, empty riverfront factories in the Northeast, or this stretch of US Route 10 that was abandoned when the road was rebuilt and rerouted around Detroit Lakes in the 1970s. Perhaps it's our short human attention spans. Maybe it's our desire as a species to always build something bigger and better, or possibly it's to observe our planet's ability to reclaim what we no longer have a use for anymore. No matter why, they will always serve as an apt metaphor for our insignificant and fleeting place on this earth. There are a couple of other summer vacation communities surrounding the other lakes in this area that we'd like to visit. The first is Walker, with a population of around a thousand that's much smaller than Detroit Lakes. A rough frontier town at its founding in the 1890s, following construction of the railroad, Walker first built its fortunes on logging before transitioning to tourism during the 20th century. Walker is situated on the southwest corner of Leech Lake, Minnesota's third largest lake and the largest one contained entirely within the state.
Bemidji is the largest of the three towns that we're visiting, with a population of over 15,000. It's at the center of three Indian reservations and is also the alleged birthplace of the legendary lumberjack Paul Bunyan. The Rotarians of Bemidji commissioned this statue of Paul Bunyan during the Great Depression as a tourist attraction. The wood industry is still a significant part of the local economy. So we truly hope that you've enjoyed visiting this corner of northwestern Minnesota and the headwaters of the Mississippi River with us. Coming up next week, our American Heartland Tour 2020 may be making its shortest move ever. We're heading just a few miles west to the area around Fargo, North Dakota. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer, this is the perfect time to go smash that little red subscribe button right down there in the corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to make sure that you come along on every grand adventure that airs every Wednesday evening. Now we'd be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. It's extremely important to us that if you like this episode, please give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're already down there, why not leave a comment in the comment section? Because we always love to hear from you after each episode. So until next week from the Fargo area, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.